Today we'll use Java to solve a game called Flip or Lights Out. The objective of the game is to make all of the lights on in this case, I guess in other variations um, you're trying to make all the lights out. So you can see by the little icon in each square which lights are toggled. So if I click the top left it will toggle this clicked square and also the one below and to the right. And then any in the middle toggle the clicked square that above, below, to the left and right. So basically all of them are to the top, bottom, left and right and the clipped square assuming that each of those tiles exists on the board. So I can try playing it now. Um, I'm not too good at it and I'll try my best to solve it. Okay, so I'm coming up on a <laughs> one that I can't solve too easily. So let's get to making the solver to do it for us. I named the class flip solver and it, I have it to do comment here and it just prints the time elapsed. Uh, load the board first. So we'll have a two-dimensional int array and let's name it board. We'll make a method called split2 uh, for two dimensions and we'll give it a string representing the board. So we can represent one as being the light is on or white and zero is meaning the light is out or black. So I'll create a new game here and we'll just do it from top to bottom, left to right. And we'll give a cell delimiter is just empty string. So we can create the split2 method and so the, the row or line delimiter is the semicolon if you'll notice. So we'll make a string array called lines and these parameter names we'll name it s for string and the other one will be cell delimiter. So the, all the lines will be s.split on a semicolon which will give us an array of strings. Let's make the two-dimensional array uh, which in this use would be the board and let's initialize it so lines.length and lines index 0 dot split cell delimiter dot length let me minimize this out of the way now that we have the board and we'll have two variables i and j will initialize them as zero so we'll iterate over all the lines and we'll iterate over all of the numbers or the cells so we'll do line.split cell delimiter and let's set the value so index i j plus plus and we'll parse the integer and after we parse this line we'll increment i and reset j to zero and at the end we'll return the array so we can test this out arrays dot deep to string board and we'll print that so we can compare the string we put here to the array that was printed here and it seems to be working okay so next we can create a variable string called solution and we'll assign it the value 
split solver dot solve and we'll pass the board as a argument and then we'll start off with cells row equals zero column equals zero okay so we'll create the method solve I'll move it to the bottom here so the parameters board row and column so basically how we'll solve this is we'll start at the top left cell and make our way incrementing each column uh, so C plus one C plus one and keep going and then once we get to the end we'll set column equals zero and increment row so we'll go to the next row the leftmost column and likewise through the rest of it until we finish the last cell and at that time row would be out of bounds and that indicates that we're done with solving so we can have a check here if row equals board dot length then we'll return um, assuming it's solved then we'll return a new linked list and I can go over why we're doing this in a bit else we'll return null indicating that it's not yet solved okay so how do we know it's solved let's make a method here so basically we're wanting to make sure that all of the tiles um, have been lit so we'll just do a nested for loop and if board index ij is zero then that's means that the light is out so if any of the lights are out then we'll return false assuming it gets past the whole board and it found no lights that were out we'll return true and this variation we're making all of the lights on okay so after that so let's import that linked list Okay, so this should be, we want to return type list entry integer integer. And with this, we'll represent the cells that we need to click in order to solve the puzzle. So I'll import those. Okay, so let's get the next column and row. So the next column would be C plus one. And if it's less than the number of columns, that is board index zero dot length, then that means we're good, that we can successfully increment the column without falling off the board. So we'll, if that's true, we'll return C plus one. Otherwise we need to return zero to get back to the leftmost column. So next R, we can use um, that result. So if next C is zero, that means we've come to the end of the row and we need to increment the row. So we'll do R plus one. Otherwise, we'll stay on the same row. OK, so We'll try for the two possibilities um, for each of the tiles. The first we'll try is not clicking it, and then we'll recursively go through the rest of the tiles on the board and see if we're able to solve it. Otherwise, we will toggle the tile and again, check if we're able to solve it.
which we should be able to with one of those. So we'll just do for i is 0, i is less than 2 for the two possibilities, toggling or not, and i plus plus. So if i is 1, then we will toggle. So I'll putting that here, and we'll toggle the board at rc. So let's create that method. So for this, we'll toggle the clips tile, the one above, below, to the left and right. And for those latter four, assuming they're on the board, otherwise we'll skip it. So let's make a new method called toggle single and pass board R and C. And we'll do the same with above, below, to the left and right. So R minus one, R plus one, C minus one, C plus one. We'll create that method here. And so we'll need to check if it's in bounds. So if R greater or equal zero and R less than board dot length and C greater or equal zero and C less than board index zero dot length, then we'll toggle it. So, and we're toggling index RC. And so if it's equal to zero, then we'll set it to one. Otherwise, we'll keep it to, uh, we'll change it to zero. You could do XOR here. Um, when I tested it for performance, it was about the same. So I'll just do this with the ternary operator. So if i equals 1, we'll toggle. And now let's solve. So do the recursive call. Solution equals solve board the next row and the next column. And I'll let my IDE type that so I don't have to type it. OK. So if solution is not null, that means we were able to solve it. So assuming we were able to solve it, let's check if we had to click this tile or not. So if i is equal to 1, that means we had to click this to toggle it for the solution. In that case, we'll add it to the beginning of the list, index 0. And we'll make a new simple entry with value rc. Let's import that. And then we'll return the solution and bubble that up for the other recursive calls. Assuming we weren't able to solve it at this point, then we should toggle the tile again because for the going through this loop with i equals 0, we didn't toggle. For i equals 1, we did toggle, and yet we still weren't able to solve. So here, we need to toggle it again to undo the changes that we made. So toggle board RC, and then return null, indicating we weren't able to solve it. So I think that's it. Let's go ahead and try this out. Oh, right. We need to print the solution. So let's do that now. So we'll be printing out. Uh, let's just run this and print the solution, and then we can see what changes we need to make to make it readable. I'll run this. Hope it works. OK, so it says 0 equals 3, 1 equals 0. These are just the entries in the list. Um, so really, it's not a key equals value. We're just using it as basically as a pair data type. What this really represents is the row, comma, column coordinates. So we can go ahead and change the solution to replace a comma with a new line. 
and we'll replace an e the equals sign with a comma. So that way it's like a row, comma, column pair. Okay, let's run that again. Okay, so this is a bit easier to read. Let's pull this up. Okay, so it says we need to toggle cell 0, 3. So row 0, column 3 is this one. 1, 0, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 4, and lastly, 4, 2. So it worked. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching.